Hi, my name is George Dimitrov. I'm a senior analyst at Ascend, and one of the areas in which I specialize is engines and engine values. And with all the turmoil that we've experienced in the markets recently, um, with all asset classes suffering in value terms because of the lack of credit primarily, but also because of other reasons, a lot of people have been inquiring on how engine values have been doing. And the answer to that is they have been holding out quite well so far. And that doesn't come as a surprise to us. Um, historically, engines have always had better residual values. And that's largely because engine values are a function of maintenance and of safety requirements rather than directly being related to passenger demand. Um, this is not to say that engine values are completely unaffected by the downturn. However, um, the drop has been cushioned, if you like, compared to other asset types. But before we go into any more detail, we need to get a better understanding of what makes up an engine's value. Uh, an engine's value is composed primarily of maintenance. The maintenance condition makes up the majority of the engine's value. If you look at an aircraft's value for a new aircraft that's being delivered, uh, about 20% of that is actually in the maintenance condition. But for a new engine being delivered, you're looking at maybe 50% of it being in the maintenance condition. As the engine gets older, um, that component grows to about 80%, and when the engine is uh, close to the end of its life, when it's around 30 years old, almost 100% of its value is entirely composed of its maintenance. That means that every time you overhaul an engine, every time you replace the parts which are inside this engine, you're actually replenishing or topping up its value. Uh, the labor cost goes up, the parts costs go up, the manufa manufacturers increase the list prices and as a result engine values tend to uh, sometimes go up. In fact, for a new in-production engine, the residual value curve can actually go up rather than down in the traditional exponential decay shape that you see for an aircraft or for most asset types. Um, so every time the list price goes up, every time the cost of the parts goes up, the value of an engine, even a used engine, can actually increase. And finally, when the engine starts becoming older, when it's replaced by new technology, and especially when the aircraft which this engine powers start to be parted out because it's more profitable to sell them as spares than as a whole, then the availability of engines increases, uh, the number of aircraft flying decreases as a result you have more supply, less demand, and the engine value finally starts to drop in a more traditional way. So now that we have a better understanding of how engine values behave, perhaps we can look at what's happening in the market. Um, the engine types that have been worst affected so far in the downturn have been by far the CFM 56-3, which powered the 737 uh, classic family of aircraft. Um, if you looked at a CFM 56-3B1 a year ago, it was worth about 2.3 million. It's now only worth a million, which is a huge drop of about 57%. If you look at the 3C1, which is the newer uh, member of that same family, it went from 3.2 million to 1.8 million, which is a drop of 45%. As you can see, uh, the, the best engine within the family usually has the least drop in value because people cherry pick and move um, towards that one and there's plenty of availability. And the reason this has happened to CFM 56-3 values is because the 737 classic market has had uh, has undergone a lot of changes in the past year uh, since about December 2007 when it was booming and there was very little availability until now when you have several hundred aircraft parked. Um, a lot of those parked aircraft have now been parted out or are intended to be parted out. This has increased the availability of spare engines, whereas the flying fleet is obviously reduced and even those that are still flying are flying less hours every day, so the demand for spares has gone down whereas the availability has gone up. And that's certainly had its impact on the values of that engine family. Um, the JT-8D family of engines, which powers the MD-80 aircraft, has also uh, taken a hit, although not as big. In the past year, the JT-8D 200 engines have only gone down between 20 and 30% in value. 
which is small in comparison to the CFM56-3, but that's because the MD80 and the JT8D market was already weak before that. Uh, if you look at the drop in value over the last two years for the JT8D, it's actually closer to 50%. Um, the main difference being that in the peak of the market between 2005 and 2007, uh, whereas the CFM 56-3s and the 737s were truly booming, the JT8s were, at, were still quite weak. And another engine that's experienced a value drop has been the V2500A1, which powers some of the oldest A320 aircraft. There aren't that many of them in, uh, in the market, it's a relatively uh, niche engine. However, as a result of older aircraft being parked, there has been an increase in availability and those values have gone down around 20 or 22 percent. As regards the in-production narrow-body engines, uh, the CFM 56-5s, the Dash 7s and the V2500A5 family, uh, values have held out and have been stable so far. We haven't actually seen any value drops, um, which is a good thing. And the same can be said for the newer generation of wide-body engines like the Rolls-Royce Trent family and the GE90 family. This is not to say that they will be unaffected by the current downturn, but if history is to be used as a guide, wherever aircraft values has, have gone down by 20 to 25 percent, engine values have correspondingly only dropped around 10 to 15 percent. And as that's why investor confidence in engines is fairly good. And even in today's market, where credit is tight and it's not very easy to get finance, um, banks are still fairly confident and comfortable with financing engines. Uh, to give you an example, loan-to-value ratios for aircraft are now as low as 50%. The average loan-to-value ratio for an aircraft financing deal being in the region of 60 to 65%. Whereas for engines, banks are comfortable lending as much as 80% of the engine's value. Uh, which shows their confidence in the residual values of the engine should they have to repossess it. If we also take a quick look at the engine leasing market, uh, we have seen some softening, but only in the region of about 5-7%, to 7 and only for some engine types. Um, there's been some major changes in the leasing market in that the number of short-term leases happening has been drastically reduced and there's been an increase in long-term leases. Why is this happening? Um, Short-term leases are usually when an airline needs a spare engine because its own engine is undergoing overhaul and it wants to continue flying the aircraft. As airlines are cutting capacity and reducing utilization, they don't necessarily lease, need to lease a spare engine. They can leave the aircraft sitting on the ground or take a spare engine from another aircraft which is parked. So the number of short-term leases is reduced uh, the increase in long-term lease leases, on the other hand, is due to um, sale and leasebacks. Airlines are desperate for cash and they are basically selling any unencumbered assets they have and very often those unencumbered assets are aircraft engines. So they are doing sale and leaseback deals with the lessors and that's resulting in more longer-term leases happening. So to round up, overall we see the market being fairly stable. Um, for especially for the newer engine types. Uh, we do expect softening across the board. Um, we're keeping an eye on the market. It's difficult to say exactly how much it will be, but it could be in the region of 5% up to as much as 15% for the newer engine types. Um, for the older engine types, uh, it could be more than that, but then again, some of them have already taken a hit. Um, the most susceptible engines to downward uh, movements in value, which haven't yet moved, are the CFM 56-5A family, which again powers older A320s, and also the medium-sized wide-body engines, which are around in the £60,000 thrust range, um, which are, for example, the uh, Pratt & Whitney 4060 or the CF6 family. Um, Again, we keep an eye on the market, we're constantly following it, um, all the changes and we would re reflect them on our values. So that's more or less all we have for today. Um, we are constantly keeping an eye on the market and for the latest value updates, always check the send online um, where any value changes we make are reflected within the next 24 hours. Thanks again and we'll keep you updated.